Good morning, guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, we are talking all about how to plan and execute a research archival trip. If you're new here, my name is Catherine, and I am currently a closing out third year PhD student here at Ohio State University studying history. And this whole week, I've been working on the final preparations for my big research trip to Australia this summer. I will be going for seven weeks, visiting four cities and going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 archives. That sounds crazy, but we're gonna try and make it work and make the most out of my trip down in Australia. As I was doing the planning, I thought it would be a great idea to take you guys through the process of what it actually takes to put together a international research trip. This could also apply to research trips in the US, but this is primarily going to be talking about historical archive research. I don't have as much familiarity with how research trips work with other disciplines, but it should still be an interesting video, so stay tuned. Okay, so step one of doing a research trip is obviously to pick your topic. Now, this could be research that you're doing just for one specific paper. This could be research for an article, or this could be research you're doing for a longer term project like a dissertation. So my topic, broadly construed, is mothers during World War I. So this trip I'm doing more of an exploratory trip. It is my first trip to Australia, so I'm trying to hit a lot of different topics that touch on my dissertation and go to a lot of different archives and just try and see what it is that's in the archive and understand how this research material can fit in with the research I've already done in France as my research is a comparative project looking at France and Australia. So step one, topic, check. Step two is to figure out what archives you actually wanna to go to. And the best way to do that is to be reading your secondary literature. So my suggestion is to read all of the books that pertain to your topic and mine the footnotes. See what research has already been done because you don't wanna be doing the same type of research, but it's also good to see where these people were doing their research, what kind of archives they used, because you could use some of the same material, but be approaching the topic in a different way. So you really wanna look through those footnotes in books, in articles, and see where you should go. Step three is to do your own research online. Once you have a kind of idea of some of the archives, you wanna be doing your own research. Using the tools that you already have, go search on archival websites, see if they have finding aids online, Google your topic. There's a lot of different ways you can do this research and it is something that is very slow. I've been working for the last semester slowly to figure out where is the best place to find the archives I need and just going through websites of state archives, state libraries, city archives, local archives, archives in weird places that you might not expect, like one of them is an Anglican diocese, which supposedly has archival files of mother's unions. So step three is to be doing your own research online and find out everything you can. And while you're doing this, I find it extremely helpful in my Notion template to be writing down important information about the archives. What does it take to get this information? Is any of it available online? Can any of it be photocopied? Can the archive do research for me? Usually no, but you never know. Um, when are these archives open? This will help in the next phase of your trip. Okay, so step four is to contact the archives. In my Notion template, I have with each archive information about who to contact. A lot of places you might just have a general inquiry form, but best bet is if you can actually find a specific archivist email but a lot of times people might have suggestions if you just do a general inquiry form. So in this phase, you wanna reach out to the archive, verify the policies and procedures for going to the archive. 
You also want to have an idea of what is already there, which is why we did step three first. Explain in your email the topic you're researching, what you've already identified at this archive, and what additional questions you may have. I kind of have a standard template that I use, which I can put up here that explains who I am, what I'm doing, what kind of information I'm looking for. And it's kind of hit or miss. Some people are like, well, this thing that you're looking for doesn't exist, good luck. A few times I've contacted state records and they don't have the kind of information I'm looking for because they only deal with government bodies. So if my particular like union or association wasn't supported by the government, my archives aren't going to be there. Contacting the archives is a step that you do not want to miss out because there could be things in place at the archive that you need to know about before you go there. Some of my archives, I need to request material for weeks out, which is a really long time in advance to plan but we will get to that step in just a minute. So by now you should have a pretty good idea of some of the archives that you'd like to visit, when they're open, what you should do in order to go to these archives. And it is time for step number five, which is grants, budget, and planning out your trip. This part is not gonna be a fun part. As you guys know, I've struggled with this for the last year, but it is a very important step. You don't really wanna be paying for these research trips on your own. So what I do every time is I create a plan that exactly details what city I'm gonna be in and for how long, and then I work with that to, to create my larger budget. So my budget generally includes the cost of flights, the cost of housing, based on sourcing ideas from a few different websites and a few different types of housing, like hotels, Airbnbs, and kind of work out to find the average of what it will be. Meals, you definitely wanna calculate your meals into your budget for your research trip. Transportation, does the city you're gonna be in use trains, buses, walking, you need to calculate that into your budget so that you really have a full idea of what the total cost is gonna be. There are some other costs that you should also be aware of, international travel insurance. My university actually requires that we have international travel insurance, but even if your university doesn't or you're not going with a university, I would still really recommend that. There could be other things that you also calculate into your budget, like the costs of any photocopying fees or fees to get into the archives. Fortunately, the last two trips I've done, only one place has needed fees to like get into the library or archive. <clears throat> but you wanna be sure that you know all of that and calculate that into your budget. And then it's time to apply for a few grants, which I'm not gonna get into that too much cause that could be a whole nother video, but you want to apply for grants, ask your university for money, get money wherever you can and have the funds available so that you can actually start making moves to put your trip into reality and start buying flights and booking your accommodations. Okay, we only have two more steps left. For step number six, you wanna do all the finishing touches on your preliminary research before you even get into the archives, which is what I've been doing this past week. You wanna identify your specific boxes or files that you're looking for. You can't really go to an archive and say, oh, like I'm here and I wanna look at files regarding mothers. You need specific details and item numbers, whether that is a box or a file, it kind of depends on the archive. You wanna have that information ready to go, either to request ahead of time or ready for when you actually physically go to the archive that first day. Again, like I said, in your previous archival research, you'll want to note down what the policies are for each archive. And this might be a step that you also reach out to fellow scholars to see if they have any ideas of how to manage certain archives or if they might have any more knowledge of materials at the archive that you're already planning on attending. So this is the step that I've been working on pretty much all week. I'm going archive by archive based on the order that I will be going. I'll be going to, like I said, four different cities. So I kind of started at the beginning of the trip I'm going through, I'm re-verifying all the information I already searched, I'm getting those item numbers, I'm making sure that the files that I want to see are on open and they're not like classified or there's no barriers for me to easily access that archival material and making sure I have specific dates 
where I know, okay, this is the date that I need to go ahead and submit the request to view these items, even if that is two, three, four weeks out. And the last step is the most fun step, which is actually going on the research trip. I filmed a little bit about my experience last year in Paris, but I'm gonna try and film again when I go to Australia. I don't leave for another month and a half, but the next month is gonna be a little busy with a wedding and moving. So a lot of this stuff, it's crucial that I figure it out now. But that is how to plan an international research trip. I hope this was helpful. And if you guys have any more questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I always try and answer as many questions as I can. And if you would like to see any of the specific things that I do on Notion to prepare and prep, I'm happy to share that as well. But as always, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.